Okay, so we've um, we, we've talked about how uh, Verilog gives us a way to uh, describe the behavior of digital circuits, um, so we don't have to build them up um, sort of logic gate by logic gate because that would become uh, too difficult when you have more complicated designs. So we, we, we've done you know a few videos now looking at some of the techniques used by Verilog um, to, to allow the designer to you know to create more complicated designs using the behavioral um, uh, blocks like the always block um, and if statements. Um, but what about the, uh, the, the way that a, a design in Verilog is built up? Um, and the basic building block of a, a Verilog design is called a module. Um, and you can think of this as kind of like a function in C or C++, but there are some you know, obvious differences between a function in C++ and um, a module in Verilog. And I think I've explained before that um, in Verilog, when you instantiate a, uh, a module, it's actually physically being instantiated somewhere in your design. Um, and if you instantiate two modules that, that are the same, then they get physically instantiated in two separate places in your design. Uh, whereas when you uh, call a function in C++, it will execute that function, but then you can call the same function again, um, and the same code will be executed again, but the separation is in time, rather than you know be, being physically separated. Uh, and, and this is one of the advantages of um, FPGAs and, and uh, digital design, because you can have lots and lots of diff different things happening in parallel at the same time. Um, and that means you can do things much faster. Um, but we have to understand the, the, the basic building block of um, a, a Verilog design, and that's called, uh, um, so I'll, we'll take a look um, in, in this video at the basic anatomy of a Verilog module. Um, and I think that there's a couple of things to say about this. One, every module in Verilog has the same structure. Okay, and we'll go through that basic structure in this video, but what we won't do is talk about, um, you know, Verilog code, you know, within that module. We'll, we'll leave that for future videos. Um, so all I wanted to do today was talk about the basic structure of a Verilog module. And, you know, it's important to say that every Verilog module looks the same. Um, you know, a bit like in C++, every function has the same kind of structure. Um, and, okay, so the first thing to note here is you start off with the keyword module. Okay, so that's this one. Um, and then the second thing that you write is the name of the module. Okay, in this case, we have a module called blank mod. Uh, but you can call your module anything uh, that you want within, obviously, the legal constraints of um, of the language. Um, now, in brackets, uh, we have the the names of the inputs and outputs of that module, um, and it's important to say here that um, Verilog is essentially a hierarchical language, so you can instantiate modules within other modules. Um, and that's that's how you build up your design, uh, really. So um, when you instantiate a module, then you have to um, you know you instantiate it with the the inputs and outputs of that particular module, um, a bit like a function in in, in C plus uh, plus. But at the the top line of the of the module, you have the keyword module, the name of the module, and then in brackets you have the inputs and outputs of that module. In this case, we have A and B. Um, now, the next thing we get to is um, these two lines here. Um, and what we need to do in a Verilog module is explicitly state um, which of these are inputs and which of, which of them are outputs. 
Okay, so that information is not contained within uh, these brackets. Okay, so we have to say in this case input wire A, um, and that indicates to uh, to the compiler that A is an input to this module. Um, we do the same thing here, but this time we have an output. So output wire B indicates to the compiler that we have an output from this module called B. Um, so really important that we uh, that we do this. Um, now in future videos, I'll talk about the difference between the wire data type and the reg data type. But for now, uh, th th there's no need to understand this um, at, at this stage. Um, so the next thing we do is we declare the internal wires and reg variables within the module. Um, if this doesn't make too much sense at this stage, um, in the next video we'll do a few examples of uh, basic modules and then you'll see that um, you know if you, if you connect uh, an AND gate uh, to another AND gate, then you end up with you know the, the connections between those AND gates only live inside that module. So they're not exposed to the inputs and the output of the module. So we have to declare them as uh, as wires. Um, and we can also declare the, the reg data type as well as, as variables. Uh, but that's one thing you do need to do in your module. Um, and the normal way to, to write a Verilog module is you write, you write your Verilog code. And as your code uh, develops, then you go back and create the, the variables that, uh, that you need. Because uh, it's very difficult to predict what variables you need before you start writing your Verilog code. Um, so the next thing you do, obviously the whole purpose of the module is to package some, uh, some logic. So this is where you start writing your Verilog code. So this is where you'd have your always blocks and your, uh, your combinational um, you know, your modules and, and instantiations of other modules. And, um, uh, and, and you know, this is where you would um, put that code. Um, now to finish the module, you use the keyword end module. Okay, uh, and that, that finishes the module and then that completes the, uh, the code for that particular module. Um, and it, it, in a typical design, so when we, when we get to uh, Quartus, the way that you build up a design in Verilog is you write uh, modules in kind of like the same way that you write functions in C++. So it helps to put, you know, if there's a discrete function, or sorry, if your code is doing something um, kind of that, that feels like it should be separated from everything else, maybe a multiplexer, maybe an FFT, maybe um, a filter, something like this, then it helps to contain it within a, a module. So it's kind of separated from all the other uh, modules in your, um, in your whole design. Um, and it also helps because as I said before, you can instantiate modules more than once. You know, if you instantiate a module twice, it just ends up existing in two different places on your FPGA. Um, so if you keep things disentangled, then it, it, it makes it easier to reuse code in the same design or indeed a different design later on. Um, so that, that's good practice in um, in Verilog. Um, so I think I'll leave this video um, here. Um, as I said before, just to summarize, every module in, in Verilog looks the same. So it, it's going to have this, the, the, you know, the same basic structure. Obviously, you're going to have different, um, a different port list. You can have as many inputs or outputs as you want. Um, obviously, it's going to have different variables depending on what your code is doing. Um, but the basic structure of a module in Verilog is going to be the same. So it really pays to learn this basic structure, to become familiar with this, and then things will be much easier to understand as we go towards actual modules that do something useful. So I think I'll, um, I'll leave that video here. So I'll see you in, in the next video when we go through a few example modules.